this is a cartoonish figure of what you would see in an extended Likoff test. And so this is pressure versus volume. But if the flow rate is constant, right, so this is the flow rate here. If the flow rate is constant, if you're injecting at a constant rate, then you could also think of this as pressure versus time. If you're injecting at a you know, constant rate, so you could also plot this as pressure versus time. The, the, you know, the, the general trend of the figure would be the same. This is zero here. If this is zero here, where is this pressure measured at? Surface, right? Yeah. So in this in this cartoonish figure, we're assuming that the pressure is measured from the surface. So that the absolute value of any of these numbers, if you actually wanted to know what they are in the reservoir, you'd have to add the column of fluid in the well bore. So it's actually always better to measure these downhole. Measure this pressure down holes, always better to do that. But quite frankly, we're lucky to get anything most of the time. Okay. So, if you begin to pressure up, and you'll start off at a constant rate because you have a fixed volume of fluid, right? I mean, a fixed volume, right? The volume of the well bore, essentially, right? So you have a fixed volume, and you're just pumping fluid into it, and the pressure is going to go up at a constant rate. You're flowing what flow into it at a constant rate. Pressure is proportional, so it's just going to go up at a constant rate. If that's all that ever happens, if you just pressure up and you never see anything else happen. You never see any inflection point in the curve or anything like that, and you just have to stop the test for some reason. Either because nothing, I mean, just you, you, your pumps aren't big enough, right? You can't, you can't, you know, you hit, you sort of hit the maximum capacity of the pump, and nothing seems to happen. Or if you're just um, short on time, you don't have time to stop drilling for long enough to do a extended leak off test. You know, if you just pressure up and pressure back down and go on about your business and nothing ever happens, you never hit this sort of inflection point that I'll talk about in a second, then we just call that a formation, evaluate, a, uh, a formation integrity test or a limit test. Because in that test, all you can say is, I, you know, I pressured up to X pressure, you know, 65 megapascals, and at that point, Nothing happened, so I'm going to assume that I didn't hi hydraulically fracture the well. So I'm going to assume that I'm below SH min, or below S3, S3, not SH min. SH, you know, because it could be that you're in a reverse faulting regime. So all you can say is I did not reach S3. So that's called a formation integrity test or limit test. Now, if either because I want to measure, a, you know, a better diagnostic test, I have more time, or I don't exceed the sort of capacity of my pumps, I can keep, keep pumping, and at some point, there'll be an inflection point in the curve, and that point of inflection is called the leak-off point. And so the leak-off point generally is accepted as a good approximation for S3. Because what happened there that caused the curve to turn over like that and caused that inflection point is that you initiated a hydraulic fracture, and now there's more volume. Right? Up to that point, you have a fixed volume. It's just the well bore. Right? It's just the well bore, so the pressure is increasing. But now you've created some new volume because you've fractured the rock. And so now you have this inflection point where it's pumping into the new volume. And that's called a leak off point. And this is probably where most tests uh, 
And this is called a, 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 a leak off test, an LOT, a leak off test or a mini frag. And this is probably where most tests stop, right? They'll, they'll, they'll run it up, look for this inflection, and then stop, and they'll call that S3. And it's a pretty good approximation for S3, but it, it's not always good, especially if you're, uh, you, you're, you're, you're pumping fluid through a cased well and through perforations in a cased well, uh, because there's just a lot of tortuosity and sort of extra stress or extra resistance of fluid flow as it goes through the perforations, right? Uh, also, if you're pumping a really high viscosity fluid, uh, could also add to that, right? So, you know, this this point, the leak off point, is you know most accurate in an uncased well if you're pumping, uh, you know, water or thin oil. Okay. So if you continue to pump, and, and really the reason for doing this longer and longer is just to get more and more accurate measurements. Okay. So if you continue to pump, eventually this curve will turn over, and this is called the formation breakdown pressure, FBP. And what's happening there is now you have sort of runaway crack growth. Now your crack is growing faster, your fracture is growing faster, adding volume faster than you can fill it. And so the pressure drops. Okay. Uh, eventually, that'll stabilize, and you'll get some plateaued region in that region. And that plateaued region, this, this sort of value, uh, it's called the fracture propagation pressure. So that's the sort of stable fracture propagation pressure. And then this is the regime we get into where, and we talked about it briefly a few weeks ago uh, when we talked about for a few minutes hydraulic fracturing uh, with respect to fracture toughness and other things. Uh, this is when we've, we've gotten into this sort of viscosity or strength dominated regime where the fracture is quite long. And so there's lots of area uh, for the fracturing fluid to act on and the sort of crack tip mechanics don't play such a big role here, uh, rather than in just, you know, you're just sort of in equilibrium. If, if you're pumping at a pressure that's higher than S3, S3 you're going to continue to um, propagate the fracture more or less constant. The fracture propagation pressure is, is a probably a slightly better measurement than the leak off pressure, because it, it you, you sort of have some time to equilibrate the effects of uh, the veneer w near well bore stuff that, that might be causing the leak off pressure to be a little bit off. Again, if you're doing this in an, in an uncased well um, with a with a high viscosity fluid, a, a low viscosity fluid, then you're um, th they're probably the same. The leak off point and the fracture propagation pressure are probably the same. Okay. So uh, then you shut in the well. So if you continue to do the test, right? so if you shut in the well, then the fracture closes. Right? So you have an initial shut-in pressure. So you know as soon as you shut in the well, the pressure begins to drop. And the reason the pressure begins to drop is because now you've stopped adding volume. You're not propagating the fracture any longer. You've stopped adding volume, so now you're back to a fixed volume, and you're in a and you're in a permeate. You know you have fluid trapped in this fixed volume that's in a permeable media, so it's gonna it's gonna leak off, right? It's gonna slowly leak off into the formation, and the pressures are gonna drop. Right? And so the, you're you know, right in the in the instant where you shut in the well is called the you know ISIP, the instantaneous shut-in pressure, and so again. Uncased well, water, oil, the LOP, the fracture propagation pressure, the, the ISIP will all be pretty fairly close to one another. But if you continue to monitor the pressure and you monitor it closely with careful measurements, you can actually get the fracture closure pressure. So this is the pressure when, you know, again, initially you have an open fracture, right, counteracting. S3, so you have poor pressure in here, counteracting S3, 
But eventually that fracture is going to close due to leak off. So the fluid's leaking off the thing that's holding the fracture open. And the fracture faces will come into contact with one another. And then the whole system will be in equilibrium. And at that sort of instant, uh, that's called the fracture closure pressure. And that, if you can, if you, again, if you run, if you carry out this test to the end called extended leak off test, and you, and you have very careful measurements, and you can identify the fracture closure pressure properly, that's probably your best estimate to estimate. Yeah. Uh, and so if we, what we're going to do in the next slide, we're going to zoom in on this part of the curve for a second. So we're going to zoom in right here. Oh, well, in the next plot we're going to zoom in. But uh, so the, the, the plot I just showed you was a uh, sort of just a cartoonish plot, but this is, this is real data. So just to show you that you know, the, the, the real data uh, tends to agree with the, the way those cartoonish plots. So you know, here, um, here you don't see quite as obvious a, f a uh, formation breakdown pressure, right? You just see this, this peak here is at shut-in. There's also a lot of oscillations in the flow rate. But if you look at the second one, so this was done twice. So if you look at the second one, this is the flow rate here. And so you have a fairly constant flow rate. And, and then you can see a better kind of peak there, formation breakdown pressure here, shut in here, and then with a K. And so, again, we're going to zoom in on this part of the curve uh, in the next plot, in the next figure. And here's two ways of plotting it. Right? So well, this is the second cycle. So there was two cycles there. And the second cycle, so if you just plot uh, the, the pressure versus time, right? And this is, so this is like 15 minutes. It takes a while to do these tests. So if you just plot this pressure versus time, you, you know, that's what you see. However, if you plot the pressure versus the square root of time, you can sort of see a inflection in the curve. Right? And the reason, is, the reason for the square root of time is that um, you know, we're, we're basically talking about diffusion here, pressure diffusion. Well, diffusion is fundamentally governed by just Brownian motion, random walks. Right? It's always a misnomer to say, like, something like the pressure drives. Go, go read Einstein's paper. In fact, it doesn't. Pre I mean, diffusion just occurs due to Brownian motion, random walking. And the statistics of a Brownian motion are that any tracer particle, if you follow it around in a random walk, its distance is going to be proportional to the square root of time. Right? And so that's what you see here. That's why if you plot it via the square root of time, this is you have this linear line. So this is sort of one limit. And where that changes, where that proportionality constant changes, you've now shut in the well. I mean, the, the, the fracture surfaces have closed. And this, this little inflection point you can identify as a fracture closure pressure. And that's probably your best estimate to S3.